Hey guys, so pilot season continues here at Wisecrack. So this one is special to us for a couple reasons. First of all, this is the first time we're gonna be talking about real world events rather than focusing on media. Secondly, we are bringing the vision of one of my favorite artists to life. It's a girl I went to college with, her name is Tyler Rice, and we're super excited to have her aesthetic be part of the Wisecrack family. But also I wanted to introduce the voice of this pilot, Jacob, who is my co-founder who created Wisecrack with me about four years ago. Hey guys, we're really pumped to get this out to you guys, so let us know what you think in the comments and make sure you let Larry know too. See you guys later. Enjoy the show. Have you seen the news lately? It sucks. Today's media landscape gives people more ways than ever to hear only the things they want to hear. When confronted with ideas that challenge their beliefs, many react with outrage, censorship, and recently, cries of fake news. This trend may seem to have popped out of nowhere, but this was actually predicted a long time ago in a book you've probably read, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. In case you slept through middle school English, the book depicts a dark future where firemen have graduated from saving cats to torching books in an attempt to silence any troubling ideas. Fahrenheit is usually interpreted as an attack on government censorship, especially since Bradbury wrote the book in the midst of McCarthy's war on communism. But there's actually someone else Bradbury blames for the dystopia his characters live in. You. Well, not only you, but all of us. See, in the book, the main character is informed that it was the public that censored themselves. It all started with the advent of mass media. Technology advanced to such a degree that people struggled to keep up. Information rushed in from every direction, overwhelming the population. To quell their anxiety, people focused on smaller pieces of information. Beatty, captain of the firefighters, describes this change, how media has been reduced from cumbersome novels to the gag, the snap ending. One column, two sentences, a headline, then midair all vanishes. Just like that we consume and forget and consume again. Rinse, wash, repeat, the mind drinks less and less. Soon, people became addicts, conditioned to feel pleasure from frivolous content. Anything thought-provoking became downright painful. As a result, people censored themselves from any challenging ideas. They sought to be pacified, numbed, and validated. Sound bites, factoids, and vapid drama blaring out any troubling ideas, blaring out reality. We see similar patterns with the rise of social networking and the feed. News story after news story that generates as you scroll, video after video, meme after meme, directly fed and programmed specifically to your liking, just as long as you continue scrolling. In Fahrenheit, the media concluded that it could attract the biggest audience by ridding itself of anything controversial, effectively ceding control of its content to outrage. Our media-saturated society is an extension of Bradbury's vision. With so many different channels, streaming services, and websites, media has fragmented, each appealing to their own individual audiences. Fox News for conservatives, MSNBC for liberals, and YouTube for flat earthers. Yet each of these media outlets must pander to their audience, which is why Fox News can't piss off mainstream Republicans, evangelicals, and NRA members, and MSNBC can't piss off mainstream Democrats, progressives, and gun control advocates. The result is isolated bubbles that become harder and harder to burst. It's like Beatty said, offend as few as possible. The truth is secondary to comfort. And once someone finds their bubble, they'll label anything that challenges their ideas as fake news. Both in the book and in real life, people protect themselves from anything that confounds or upsets. They just want to continue watching and scrolling, and watching and scrolling, and watching and scrolling. So what happens next? In Fahrenheit, it's here that the government steps in, encouraging everyone to stay in the bubble and torture any stragglers, sometimes literally. Are we destined for a similar fate? Or will the champions of free thought save us all? Right. hope you guys enjoyed that. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you wanna see a pretty close to final cut of our next pilot coming out, join us over at wisecrackplus.com. It's our Patreon page, where we're always uploading new cuts and stuff and asking our patrons for feedback. And it's a great community, so we'd love if you guys were a part of it. That's right, it's because of all of you guys, all of our patrons and our fans that were able to make all these really cool pilots and work with some amazing artists and animators and musicians. So thanks so much. Be sure to check out our pilots and we'll catch you at the next one. Thanks guys. Peace.